So let's take a look at communication. I'm going to call this the inter-thread communication. Remember that we talked about how we have our main program, which is uh, which is running some code. repeatedly and we have our background threads so background thread is some interrupt service routine that's been triggered that's triggered it performs some task and returns from the interrupt and there could be a second one and so on so the question is how does information get passed between the main thread and the background thread. So first we might think that well we could use uh, something like a variable, a local variable if you will, or a register to put things in and we will realize that when we do a context switch, all that information is lost because we have a new context. So what can we use to communicate between the two? So the part that is accessible to both the main and the back background is memory. So the global memory. So let's, uh, let's see how this will work. We will look at it in three examples. The first example we will look at is, a, is communicating between the background and foreground using a simple flag. A flag like this could involve the main program is waiting for some event to occur and the background thread will, will, will allow the main program to know that this event has occurred by raising a flag. The second one is a little more substantial. That is, we will communicate back and forth using what I call a, the concept of a mailbox. A mailbox is involves actual data that is being communicated and a state. So we have data and state. So we'll use two global variables for this. The third one is what good real-time systems should use because they allow for good asynchronous communication, these are buffers. And specifically, we'll use a, a FIFO, which is allows us to buffer, so the background thread, if it wants to communicate to the main thread, adds to a buffer, and the main program is gonna consume from this buffer. So this will be the third one we'll look at. So let's look at the first example. The first example involves where the main program wants to know whether an event has occurred. The event has occurred. And this event is, is the occurrence of this event is through an interrupt service routine. So the occurrence of the event will be indicated by the interrupt service routine by setting a flag which is a global variable to one it sets that and it quits now the main program which was doing its work whatever that work was it this is the work of the main program the task the main task it was performing that task but it periodically actually every so often it'll check this flag and if the flag is set to one, then it does some work. So it, it'll do some, do some work associated with that event, with event and then it goes back and does it other, its other calculations. On the other hand, if the flag is not set, then it'll just go back and do what it was normally meant to do, which is repeat the, the core work that it was meant to design for. 
And one thing we have to be sure is that when we have in fact done the work associated to the event, we will disable the flag. We'll set it to zero. This way, when I come back to check the flag again, I'm not finding the flag to be on simply because I did not have the, um, I did not turn it off. We can extend this idea of a flag to incorporate passing of data through a mailbox. The mailbox has two components. It has the flag, just like the previous example, but we're going to add a data field. In this particular example of a mailbox, the purpose will be to pass data from the interrupt service routine into the main program. For example, the UART could have uh, been triggered by the arrival of a, of a data packet and so the data that is being read from the UART could be put into this data, data buffer, if you will, or mailbox. And the flag is raised to indicate to the main program that there is fresh data. So in the interrupt service routine, we will read the data from the input and we will write it to a global variable and then we will set the flag to a one. Now the main program, which looks a lot like this, is checking the flag. If the flag is zero, that means there is no data, then it will do something else. But if the flag is a one, there is data, then we can process or observe or look at or enjoy this data. It's called consuming the data. We will use it up. Whatever we're supposed to do with that data, we will do. And then, just like we did with the flag, we will clear the flag. And so we notice that there is a clear definition of what this mailbox is. If the flag is equal to zero, that means there is no data and the main program is waiting. Doing other things. But if the flag is one, that means there is data and the main program, if it notices it, can take the data. So this is a classic paradigm called the producer-consumer paradigm. The background thread, hmm? the background thread is going to produce data, and the foreground thread, which is our main thread, consumes data. So, so John, can can we also have the other way around? Yes, the main program could be the producer. And what it would do is it would write into data and it would set the flag. And the interrupt service routine could be the consumer and it would check the flag and then use the data. So data could flow in the other direction in a mailbox. So this allows for communication between any threads in any direction. Absolutely. Let's look at the third way to communicate, and that's called a FIFO, or a first in, first out. Buffer. Buffer, okay. If we're passing data from the interrupt service routine, this means this is probably an input device. If we're passing data we are going to put that data into a FIFO. This is a buffer which will store this data. When we put, we're going to put it into this FIFO. It's a buffer that contains data. 
the main program, when it wants data, it will call get. So there are two functions with a FIFO, and then it will consume that data or use it up. And so the data flows from the producer, which is in this case the interrupt, through the FIFO into the main program, which is the consumer. There are two functions, put, which stores data in, and get, which stores it out. So the FIFO has a number of properties, one of which it is order preserving, which means the order in which I put it will match the order in which I get it. So data is streamed from one thread to another. So the FIFO is extending the idea of a mailbox. A mailbox is just one data item, but now we've expanded it so that we can have n data items, many data items.